Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the FY22 Challenge America Guidelines webinar. And thanks, Christine. As um, she said, my name is Michael Orlov, the Arts Endowment's Director of State, Regional, and Local Partnerships and International Activities. Joining me are my incredibly awesome Challenge America colleagues, specialists, Lara Holman Giratano and Mary Sellers, Senior Advisor Jennifer Lindo Eskin, and Assistance, Assistant Grants Management Specialist Alexandra Fogel. We are so pleased to share details about the Challenge America program with you today. And we realize that for some of you, you may be thinking about applying to the National Endowment for the Arts for the very first time. So we'll begin today with a very brief overview of arts endowment funding programs, application deadlines, and eligibility requirements before taking more specific, talking more specifically about Challenge America uh, programs. There have been a number of changes to the Challenge America program since it was last offered, and we'll talk through those changes as we go along. In addition to this webinar, we have a number of other technical assistance resources for Challenge America's applicants, including two recorded videos that will walk you through each step, both part one and part two, of the arts endowment application process. We'll talk about these more later in the presentation, and we encourage you to view those after the webinar. They are available on our website at arts.gov. If you have general questions, enter them in the Q&A area at the bottom of the screen, and my colleague Alexandra will address some of those as we move forward in the presentation. We will also have a dedicated Q&A time at the end of the presentation. If you have questions that are specific to your organization or questions you think of after the presentation, we will welcome you to contact us via email. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce a special guest who would like to say a few words. Ra Joy, our Chief of Staff at the National Endowment for the Arts. Welcome, Ra. Please say hello to our friends out in webinar land. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ra Joy, and I'm proud to serve as the new Chief of Staff at the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, for 55 years, uh, the Arts Endowment has worked to strengthen the creative capacity of our communities by providing all Americans with diverse opportunities to experience and participate in the arts. Um, tomorrow marks the 50th day in office for President uh, Joseph R. Biden. And I just wanna say how grateful I am uh, to work for an administration that values and appreciates uh, culture and the arts. Uh, this commitment to the arts is not just reflected uh, in having really strong cultural agencies, it's also embodied in the arts playing an active role across the federal government and across all dimensions of civic and community life. Uh, I mentioned to my colleagues uh, from the Arts Endowment that I'm on pins and needles right now. I'm really uh, super excited because the House of Representatives just passed President Biden's uh, historic American Rescue Plan, uh, which is a $1.9 trillion uh, COVID relief package. Um, the American Rescue Plan is a beacon of hope uh, for the American people and a signal to arts organizations and to creative workers that help is on the way. Um, and this relief package is really about getting shots in arms and uh, checks in the mail. Uh, I want to say in the face of the myriad of challenges that uh, we're confronting uh, as a nation, uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris are committed to building our economy and our communities back better than before. Um, as we gather here today to, to relaunch uh, the NEA's Challenge America program, uh, we want to focus on the arts and opportunities uh, that uh, are presented uh, to help heal and unite our communities. Uh, since its inception, 
the Challenge America program has been all about new possibilities and new partnerships. Uh, Challenge America is often referred to as the Arts Endowments on-ramp program. Uh, it serves as an entry point uh, often for new grantee partners. Um, when it was established, uh, the Challenge America program was the only national funding source specifically designed for small and mid-sized organizations. And at the time, it was the only NEA grant program that proposed uh, that projects extend the reach of the arts to communities that have been historically underserved uh, by government. And that includes projects in urban, rural, and tribal communities. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Michael Orlov and all of our colleagues from uh, the Arts Endowment for organizing today's session. Uh, I always um, say time and time again that uh, we have the most knowledgeable and accessible staff team in America. Uh, I wanna thank all of you uh, for making time uh, for uh, today's session. Uh, with all that's going on in the world today, uh, we appreciate you making time and space uh, to learn more about uh, this important initiative. Uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, we hope that you come away uh, with a view that the Arts Endowment is a ready resource for you, not just today, um, but every day. And so uh, thanks again for all that you do and um, stay well. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. And thanks for uh, joining us this afternoon. We too are super excited about today's news and uh, ditto to all the sentiments uh, you shared. Um, now to dive a little deeper into the webinar, I will hand it over to the very capable hands of Lara Holman Giratano to go over some general information about arts endowment funding opportunities. Great, thanks Michael. Uh, as Ron mentioned, Challenge America is an entry point for organizations that are seeking arts endowment funding. And this webinar has been designed to first walk you through the arts endowment application process and then cover specific details for the Challenge America program. So let's start at the beginning. Funding from the National Endowment for the Arts is for arts projects. This means that you must propose a specific project for funding rather than request general operating support. We are committed to diversity, equity, inclusion, and fostering mutual respect for the diverse beliefs and values of all individuals and groups. And we encourage projects that use the arts to unite and heal in response to current events while reaching underserved audiences. This slide shows you two of our primary funding programs for arts organizations, which are Challenge America and Grants for Arts Projects. Above each deadline, you'll see a brightly colored graphic that represents each program. And we've included the application deadlines for these programs here. Challenge America is April 22nd, and Grants for Arts Projects has two deadlines. The first one is typically in February each year, and the second one is in July. This slide includes an image of two dancers in motion, and the performers are in orange and yellow costumes. There are basic eligibility requirements for organizations across our grant programs. And those include that we fund nonprofit tax exempt 501c3 US organizations, units of state or local government, and federally recognized tribal communities or tribes. Eligible organizations may include local arts agencies and educational institutions. Applicants must also have a three year history of arts programming by the application deadline and also be compliant with reporting requirements for any previous arts endowment award. And then all grants do require at least a one-to-one non-federal cost share or match. The cost share can be any combination of cash or in-kind third-party contributions. And in-kind donations may include donated goods or services, provided venues, or the contributions of the volunteers. In terms of application limits, an organization may submit only one application to either Grants for Arts Projects or Challenge America. 
And there are a few exceptions to that rule, and those are outlined in our program guidelines, but generally each eligible organization can submit one application. On this slide, you'll see an image of a hand with a turquoise ring that is weaving a red, white, and green thin fabric in a loom. So let's go ahead and dive into some specifics about the Challenge America program now. Challenge America offers support primarily to small organizations for projects in all artistic disciplines that extend the reach of the arts to populations that are underserved. The program is rooted in principles that include, but are not limited to, our recognition that some populations and some geographic areas have limited grant funding opportunities and or they may have been historically underserved by national arts funding. Some small organizations may face barriers to accessing grant funding. And some new applicants to the arts endowment may benefit from enhanced technical assistance resources. Challenge America really seeks to address these potential barriers for organizations that are seeking federal arts funding. The program features an abbreviated application, a standardized $10,000 grant amount, and a robust structure of technical assistance to facilitate entry to arts endowment funding opportunities. And for Challenge America, projects must extend the reach of the arts to populations that are underserved. If you have applied to Challenge America in the past, you'll notice that eligibility requirements are one of the bigger changes to the Challenge America program this year. Challenge America is an entry point for organizations seeking arts endowment arts funding, and it does have some specific eligibility requirements. So in addition to arts endowment eligibility requirements around nonprofit tax exempt status, your programming history and reporting requirements for previous grants, Organization should also note the following Challenge America program specific eligibility requirements. Eligible applicants include first time applications to the Arts Endowment and also applicants who have been unsuccessful in other grant programs. It is important to note that organizations that have applied to and been funded through Challenge America or Arts Engagement in American Communities in the past are eligible to apply through Challenge America. However, organizations that have recently been successful in our other funding programs are not eligible to apply to Challenge America. So if you've applied and received a grant in one of the last three years through Grants for Arts Projects or Research or Our Town, you are not currently eligible to apply through Challenge America. It is our expectation that organizations will eventually transition from Challenge America to the Grants for Arts Projects program, which is the Arts Endowment's principal funding opportunity. You are able to check your organization's grant history using the Arts Endowment's recent grants tool. And you'll see the URL for recent grants here, as well as a screenshot for what that page looks like on our website. If your organization applied for funding in fiscal year 21 and you haven't yet received notification on the status of that application, you can go ahead and give your program staff contact a call to check in on the status of that. All Challenge America grants are for $10,000, which means with the Arts Endowment's required one-to-one -one match, your application must have a project budget that is at least $20,000. So this includes a $10,000 NEA ask and then a minimum $10,000 cost share match. Projects may be large or small, existing or new, and they may take place in any part of the nation's 50 states, DC and US territories. Projects may consist of one or more specific events or activities and projects may be a part of your regular season or activities. Challenge America supports arts projects in all artistic disciplines. Projects must extend the reach of the arts to populations that are underserved. So some possible projects include, but are not limited to arts programming, which might include commissioning or presentation of artists or artwork. They include marketing and promotional activities, organizational planning. 
The breadth of eligible project types in Challenge America is new this year. There are no specific project types required as there have been in years past. And that is another big change to the grant program this year. And this slide includes an image of a triangular shaped sculpture. It has a wheel on the side and a blonde woman and a young boy have their hands on the wheel. There are some restrictions on what arts endowment funds and the cost share can support. For example, we do not fund general operating support or lobbying or commercial activities. The full list of items that we do not fund is published in the guidelines on our website at arts.gov. Now I am going to hand it over to Mary Sellers to get into all of the details of the Challenge America application. Great, thanks Lara. So this slide includes an image of seven youth playing cello in long sleeved red shirts. So you'll remember we began today's presentation by saying that the focus of Challenge America is to support projects that extend the reach to, of the arts to populations that are underserved. So your application must identify a specific underserved population that, engaged, that is engaged by your project. So let's talk about this a little more. So what do we mean by underserved? The term underserved is defined by our legislation and agency policy. It refers to those whose opportunities to experience the arts are limited by geography, ethnicity, economics, or disability. At least one of these characteristics must be evident in the proposed project. So age alone, like youth or seniors, would not qualify as an underserved population. In the grant application form, you must include a very specific description of what underserved means in your community. This information will help reviewers better understand the specific population that your project is intended to reach and how that constituency has been historically underserved. Wherever possible, include relevant details and quantifiable demographic statistics that describe your intended audience. During our review process, panelists will evaluate projects based on two criteria, artistic excellence and artistic merit. The, com the complete definition for our re review criteria is included in the program guidelines. So you'll wanna read through the review criteria fully before you start your application. But here are a few examples of considerations included within both artistic excellence and artistic merit. So first, artistic excellence refers to the quality of artists, arts organizations, works of art, or services that the project will involve. It might also uh, refer to the relevance of all of these elements to your constituency as defined in your application. Artistic merit includes a number of considerations and we won't cover all the lists here, um, but again, you'll wanna read through the full list in the program guidelines. Under artistic merit, reviewers will consider elements such as the potential of the project to reach populations that are underserved, the potential to make quality arts or cultural resources more widely available, and the ability of the project to grow organizational capacity and experience as appropriate. You'll find the full review criteria definitions within the Challenge America guidelines. So the application deadline for Challenge America, as we've mentioned before, is April 22nd, 2021 at 1159 Eastern time. And your application will include two parts. So the guidelines, uh, they include the step-by-step -step instructions for completing both part one and part two. And um, you'll follow these instructions to make your way through all the various steps and forms um, for the application. And we're gonna talk briefly about part one and part two, but we do have a pre-recorded presentation um, that will walk you through every step of each of those parts. And we really encourage you to take the time and watch those. Um, they're reasonably short and you can kind of fast forward as you need through them. So uh, in order to complete part one, your organization will need to first have a current and active registration with federal entities, including the System for Award Management, also known as SAM, and the grant, the grant and grants.gov. So these registrations are always free. 
um, but they can take some time to, to complete. So we really recommend that you get an early start. Um, and for more information about these registrations, you can look into the guidelines. Um, it provides a lot of details. Both of these systems are separate from the NEA and they have their own help desk to answer any questions you have with your account. So often the quickest way to reach SAM.gov and Grants.gov is by calling them directly. You can reach SAM.gov by calling 1-866-606-8220. And you can reach Grants.gov by calling 1-800-518-4726. Part one is submitted through Grants.gov website. And your part one form must, must be successfully submitted through Grants.gov by the deadline on April 22nd for you to be able to continue the application process and move to part two. So on this slide, you'll see a screenshot from SAM.gov and Grants.gov of their homepage. So a few days after you submit part one, you'll have two pieces of information. Um, and th those two pieces are required to continue to move to part two. You'll have a username and a password to sign into our online applicant portal and submit the application narrative and other materials. So on this slide, you'll see a screenshot of the applicant portal homepage and then an image of the portal once you log into the system, just to give you an idea. For applicants that successfully submit part one through grants.gov by April 22nd, the next step is part two submission. The deadline for part two submission is May 4th, 2021. However, you can prepare part two right now by downloading part two instructions that are available on our website. This takes you step-by-step step through all the questions you'll be asked on the grant application form. And again, we have a separate video that goes over in more detail what you'll need to prepare for part two and how to go about submitting it. And then our staff will notify you with the recommendation or rejection status of the application in October, 2021. Projects may start no earlier than January 1st, 2022, and projects may extend up to two years. So we understand that applying for federal funding can be a significant undertaking. Our staff strives to ensure that every applicant receives the support they need to understand every step of the application process and ultimately submit the most competitive application. We are available to answer your any questions you might have about Challenge America. And this webinar is just the first in a series of resources that we have available to guide you through the application process. Once you've fully read through the Challenge America program description and the application guidelines on our website, we encourage you to first watch the Challenge America part one pre-recorded presentation. This will walk you through the federal registrations needed to apply and submitting the federal application for Federal Domestic Assistance Short Form through grants.gov. You'll also want to watch the Challenge America Part 2 pre-recorded presentation that will walk you through each step of completing the Arts Endowments grant application form and submitting it through our applicant portal. You can also participate in Challenge America Zoom-based office hours where we'll answer questions live in small group settings so you can come prepared with questions you might have. And then another really helpful page that you'll find in our guidelines that is, um, that is newer is uh, dedicated to common application mistakes. So you'll, make, you'll really want to make sure you use this resource and read through it um, on our website. You'll find links to all of these resources within the Challenge America guidelines in the Applicant Resources tab um, on the website. So just a few final thoughts before we begin our Q&A and answer all your questions. Um, please give yourself plenty of time to complete and renew, renew and update your SAM and Grants.gov registrations. We recommend doing this as soon as possible in case you encounter any difficulties. Also take some time to carefully read the application guidelines and instructions before you begin. Our guidelines include step-by-step -step instructions to walk you through each part of the application process. You'll also wanna plan your work to ensure that your application is complete and submitted on time. Late applications will not be accepted. We encourage you to submit part one by April 13th to give yourself ample time 
to resolve any issues before the actual deadline of April 22nd. Likewise, um, submit all of your part two materials to the applicant portal well in advance of the deadline. The hours of heaviest usage are generally 8 p.m. to 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, the day of the deadline. So we recommend to avoid using the system during that time. Each year we have applicants who wait till the very last minute and run out of time before they can submit. So we don't want that to happen to you guys. So now I'll turn it back to Michael. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, Lara. I just wanted to um, reiterate that the Challenge America team are here to help you. And I'm uh, so fortunate to work alongside such an incredible team. Uh, as was suggested before, do contact us via email or phone with your questions. And um, speaking of questions, I think we've got about 30 minutes left. Let's get to your questions. Uh, please enter them in the Q&A area of the, at the bottom uh, of your screen. And if we don't get to your questions, please don't worry. We will follow up directly with you to answer any questions after the webinar. Also, feel free to reach out to us with any questions that come up as you start the process. And please, please remember as you move forward, to take advantage of all the resources in the Challenge America section of our website. Okay, uh, there are lots of questions already in the queue and uh, I'm gonna adjust my screen here so I can see them all. And we'll start from the top uh, and just thank you all for um, focusing for the last 30 minutes. Um, so, First question, it's almost a two-part question. And of course, Lara and Mary are gonna be here to assist me. Um, we will not receive a decision uh, on our, so let me, let me back up. The last Challenge America round was canceled, true. And we were urged to submit our application to Grants for Arts projects, which we did. We will not receive a decision on this until April. If denied, we would like to pursue Challenge America, but we are not likely to hear a decision on grants for arts projects until uh, slightly prior to the Challenge America deadline. Is there a way around this catch-22? Anybody wanna? I can answer that. Um, so unfortunately the answer is, the short answer is no, there's no way around it. Um, what you can do is reach out to your program specialist in, in the discipline um, that you applied for, and, and they might be able to give you a more uh, accurate date of when you might hear. Um, the other option is that you can submit part one, which is if you haven't, if you submitted in GAP, then you know it's a page and a half, um, uh, just like information about your organization and the contact people. So it's a pretty quick submission if you have your grants.gov and sam.gov up to date, which it sounds like you probably do if you submitted to GAP. Um, so you could submit that. And then if you end up getting funded, you just wouldn't submit that part two. Um, and you would just receive notice from us that you submitted an incomplete application. And it's like no harm, no foul. It's sort of a backup plan. Um, but the other option is to wait. And it gives you a few, it gives you two weeks or so probably uh, to submit that part one. Thank you, Mary. And again, all of these questions, if you need further information, reach out to us uh, directly. Next question, can you expand on what represents three years uh, of history of arts programming? Is this broadly or narrowly defined? For example, my organization has just opened an arts and artist in residency program in a historically low income neighborhood, but we have been planning for more than three years. Can answer that one. Um, so the guidelines do require that you have three year a three year history of arts programming. Um, planning may be part of that programming history, and in the Challenge America application, if you've submitted it in years past, you'll notice this year that part of the abbreviated application is that we have cut back on how much we're asking you to provide in that programmatic history section. So you will need to just 
provide one example for each year of those three years of your arts programming history. And those three examples, one from each year, will help to, well, first of all, they will um, prove your eligibility for the program, that you have that three-year programming history. And then they'll also help you to make your case in terms of the review criteria of artistic excellence and artistic merit. So you can keep that in mind as you decide which examples you put in that programmatic history. Thanks, Lara. Uh, next question. Oops, it just jumped. Can an arts organization apply for both Challenge America and Art Town? And the short answer is yes. Anything, Lara, Mary, you want to add to that? <laughs> I'll, I'll say yes. Um, and if you are interested in Our Town, um, I will note it's a it's a pretty competitive grant to get, but it's wonderful. Um, so if you are, I would encourage you to reach out to um, the Our Town team. And if, if you have any questions, email us and we can connect you just so that you really are submitting an application that's going to do well. Um, we had an uptick in applications this year. So we, you want to make sure that you're putting um, efforts towards something that's worthwhile. Thank you. Next question. Would grant funds cover instructor slash artist salary slash fees for after school cultural fine arts education that caters to underserved students considered at risk, Title I schools and low income families? Yes, um, there is some language in the guidelines that makes a distinction between arts education, the type of projects that should go through our arts education discipline of grants for arts projects um, versus the type of programming that it sounds like you're talking about, which is after school type of arts enrichment programming. And those type of projects we would see come through Challenge America. Um, you'll want to explain your underserved audience um, with the, the schools that you're working with. Um, if your programming is more focused on standards-based curriculum types of arts education projects or professional development for arts educators, those type of projects, we would encourage you to look at the Grants for Arts Projects program and take a look at the arts education guidelines for that discipline. Thanks, Clara. Here's a very specific question. Can we include facility cleaning services as programming costs? So likely that would be um, an indirect cost um, and you would have to in your budget um, a lot for the percentage um, that is so if you were to have a say you were doing an after school program and um, you know you'd only charge it for the time that your project is happening rather than like the whole day it would just be for that specific portion um, and you can either do indirect costs that are right in the budget, or you can do an indi indirect 10%. Um, if you don't have an indirect cost rate negotiated, if you have an indirect cost rate negotiated, then you can use that. Um, and if none of this makes sense to you, <clears throat> reach out to us and we can provide you more information. I wouldn't get so hung up on, on that piece as you're submitting your application um, because we, we work with you later in the process if we have any questions about your budget, um, but you could potentially put that in as a line item, as an indirect cost. Thank you, Mary. Um, here's what seems to be a simple question, but it is not. Uh, define a small organization, <laughs> uh, something uh, we also struggled with. Um, I'll just say, and, and I'll let uh, Lair and Mary jump in, um, while uh, it's impossible to specifically define it, um, you can look at it um, many ways. One, um, size of budget, um, size of staff, um, and uh, really look at the vast range of organizations that apply to the NEA and how those differ from organizations like, let's say, the Lincoln Center, which is clearly not a small organization, to uh, organizations that um, maybe have a budget size of a million dollars or less. Um, I don't know, Mary or Lara, if you want to jump in and add any more qualifying characteristics. 
I think um, exactly what you said. We have intentionally not defined small organizations just because we know that it can be different in different communities depending on where you are in the country. Um, it can also be different depending on what artistic discipline you're talking about. Um, so the one thing I would add to what Michael said is that you do have the opportunity and we really encourage you to explain to the panelists why you why your organization is small. Why do you feel that your organization is small and provide that context for them in your application? Thank you. Next question for project timeline. Can we align our project with our fiscal year, which is July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023? So the answer is yes. Um, so as long as the project start date is after January 1st, 2021, you can start your project, whatever works for you, whatever aligns best with your organization. So, um, you know, a June 2022 to the following year, that's absolutely fine with us. Next question, if you have not received an NEA grant in the past six years, and the last one was a Challenge America grant, and we're about a $2 million organization. Would you suggest applying for Challenge America or wait for grants for arts projects, which the next deadline is in July? Well, I think there's a couple of things to consider. Um, I think you can, first of all, consider the, um, the focus of Challenge America on underserved audiences, because part of this application, the, the, really the heart of the application is you making the case, first of all, for who your underserved community is, and then secondly, how your project is really set up to reach and engage that audience. So I would think about that first as you decide between Challenge America and grants for arts projects. Um, and then there are some other considerations as well in terms of when your project is starting. Um, Challenge America will allow for projects to start as of January 1st of the following year. Um, gap, gap, if you wait for the July gap deadline, your timeline would be bumped back about six months. Those funds wouldn't be available until June um, of the following year. So hopefully that answers the question, but let us know if you have other questions on that. I'll, Thanks, I'll Laura. Just, I'll go, just go add. Uh, yeah, I'll just add um, that basically you're you're eligible. We're not disqualifying folks for not being small enough or whatever. Um, so as long as you believe and you are reading the guidelines, you're like, yeah, that's a good fit for me. And I we identify as a smaller organization among our peers, um, then you can make the case for it. Um, but if you are like, oh, I don't know, we're not really small, then um, then reach out to us and, and we can have a conversation and. Um, you know, if not, we can connect you with our folks or colleagues at in Gap. Thank you. And for those on the webinar, uh, the two people you're hearing from the most, Lara and Mary, are <clears throat> the Challenge America team. You'll be uh, coordinating, connecting, and collaborating, and emailing and phone calling with them. So uh, this is the group um, that you'll be talking to, and and they um, are more than happy to answer your questions. We'll uh, keep moving with the questions, which there are many. Uh, would in-school in artist residencies be eligible as long as the school is in an underserved area? Specifically wondering if arts projects that integrate the curriculum are eligible placing teaching artists in the classroom. Uh, so that goes back to that earlier question about kind of the the arts education type of projects that we do encourage um, you to take a look at the guidelines for grants for arts projects. You could take a look at the arts education discipline. Um, and we do certainly see projects come into Challenge America that may have artists working in the schools. Um, lots of things where artists are coming in, there may be, you know, pre-COVID time, there might have been some assemblies and, and artists working in the school. But if you're really looking at that standards-based curriculum type of programming, then go ahead and take a look at the Grants for Arts Projects program and look at the arts education guidelines um, to see how that lines up with the type of project that you're thinking of. Thanks, Laura. Next question. I'm in a small arts district in Baltimore City. We collaborated, but we're not the lead on a project that received NEA funding, uh, an R-Town grant last year. 
It's a two-year project. Can my arts district apply for a Challenge America grant with a neighborhood partner? So from the information you provided, um, you would likely be eligible because you weren't the lead applicant. Um, it's, we, we are going by, we're not looking at partners, we're just going by the technical applicant because partners sort of shift around in projects from time to time. So, um, so you would likely be eligible if you're able to meet the other eligibility criteria. Thank you. Um, next question, uh, it is, um, is it only to fund a project? Therefore we are not, oh, that we answered already, sorry. Um, thank you, Challenge America team. Can you expand on the cost share match? Must it be a minimum of $10,000 uh, contribution? If you have a donor or contributor, this just shifted on me, I'm sorry. Um, if you have a donor or contributor that contributes more than $10,000, can you allocate half to be the match? Do you need me to reiterate that or did you get it? Let me give it a shot and we'll see if this answers the question. Um, so the basic explanation of what the match is, is every federal dollar needs to be matched one-to-one -one with a non-federal dollar. So if you, if the Challenge America Awards are that $10,000 amount, so you need to have a match that's at least $10,000. If your budget is more than $20,000 for the project and you end up having more income than that minimum $10,000 match, that's okay. Um, you don't have to have the project budget be exactly $20,000, um, but you do need to have it be at least $20,000 to have the project be eligible. So minimum of a $20,000 project budget, which will include an ask to the NEA of $10,000, and then it will include a match of at least $10,000. Um, and then I'll just say one other thing with that as well is that that match does not have to be new money coming into the project. It can be um, your staff time. It can be volunteers that you have with your project. It can be some of the work that your partner is doing. So it can include both costs that are already part of your organizational work and then also some of the things that your partners are bringing to the table with income. Thank you, Lara. Uh, next question. Um, if we have previously received funding from an NEA funded program at the level of our state government, in this case, the Kansas Creative Arts Industry Commission, are we still considered first time applicants for NEA funding? So yes, we are not looking at um, what, the, what the states are funding. Um, so you would be, if you haven't applied directly to us, then you'd be a first applicant with us. Um, and, uh, and I will add that, um, just lost my train of thought. So yeah, so yes, yeah, so you can, oh, I will say you can't use that thought of it. Um, you can't use it uh, to match in your grant. So you couldn't put, um, and I shouldn't say always, but oftentimes if you had a money from us that came from the state, you couldn't use that money to match our money because it'd be matching our money with our money. So um, budget wise, you couldn't use it that way, but you could absolutely apply. Um, and it sounds like you'd be eligible. Thanks, Mary. Next question, can the match come from a government agency like the local parks department? Short answer is yes. Um, where we get, um, where it gets complicated is if you are uh, receiving money from a federal uh, arts a, uh, federal agency, but um, local government um, agencies uh, like the local parks department is fine. Lara, Mary, anything else to add? Uh, just I'll add on that the one thing you might want to check is if the money that's coming from your local government, whether it's city, county, or if you're talking about state funds, make sure that it wasn't sourced originally from the federal government, and they should be able to tell you that as well. Thank you. Um, next question. Our arts organization has received the Challenge America grant for the past three years, 2018, 19, and 20. 
Are we ineligible to re reapply this year? No, in, in the past, you'll remember that there was a rule where after three years you had to sit out. That rule is no longer. Um, again, this program is encouraging folks that either have not applied to the NEA uh, or folks who have not been successful. Um, so this year you would be, you would likely be eligible to apply to Challenge America again. Um, but you'll want to in future years, um, and even this year, you might want to look at the gap program to see if it might be a better fit um, potentially for you to receive more funding. Um, so just something to consider that we're encouraging folks to eventually sort of transition out of Challenge America. Thanks, Mary. Uh, next question, will Challenge America funding apply to covering ticket and travel expenses for underserved audiences to a, in this case, a contemporary dance performance and a workshop series? Um, yeah, we could. We will see projects come through that might have, if you're talking about travel in terms of like costs for buses or that type of stuff to get students to something, um, that could be part of your um, your project cost. And we mentioned in the um, in the PowerPoint presentation, but I'll say it again, that there is a really specific list of things that we're not able to use federal funds for. Um, in the guidelines on our website, there's a link that is entitled, um, I think it's We Fund, We Do Not Fund. So take a look at that and it'll list out some really specific things that we're not able to use costs for. But yes, what you're talking about of ticket prices and, and getting folks to an event, um, that would be part of your project costs. Thanks, Lara. Um, next question. Uh, there's been several questions about how many projects we anticipate funding and what is the average percentage of applications funded. Um, that comes up a lot. Um, I'll just say we, we do have a set amount of funding. Um, it uh, all depends on how many projects we get in. We do anticipate getting more applications uh, than in years past, but uh, I'll let um, Lara, Mary, since they have a little bit more of historical knowledge of the past few years about the percentage. Yeah, so I will say that um, in years past, it's it's hovered around like 50 or 60% of applications get funding. But this year, because we're changing a lot of both the eligibility, also because the, the program was kind of defunct for a year, um, there's a lot of elements that we're just unsure about. And it, so it will completely depend on how many applications we receive. Um, so any sort of guesstimate is exactly that. It's a total guess for us. Um, so, you know, if you if you feel like your project's a good fit, I would submit an application and, um, you know, worst case scenario, if you don't get funding, you can call us and you can get um, feedback from us, which is super valuable, both for Challenge America future applications, but also for Grants for Arts projects, we can, we can really go deep with you one on one um, after that. So just something to, to consider. Thanks, Mary. I'll uh, take this one. Uh, can you define presenting and multidisciplinary works? Um, would an arts and music festival fall in this category? Um, was my previous portfolio, so I hope I can define it. Um, really presenting in multidisciplinary works is an application uh, and a project that includes more than one arts discipline. Uh, so um, an arts and music festival would certainly fall in this category. Um, rule of thumb is, for instance, if it's a dance project, it should go to dance. Uh, if it's a project that includes dance and music and film, that would be uh, more considered presenting a multidisciplinary works uh, application. Um, a couple quick questions, and I'll just rattle off two or three uh, for everybody. If awarded is funding in one check or installments, uh, would the grant cover dollars for sliding scale tuition? Those are two different questions. So the 
mostly the grant is done on reimbursement basis. However, we also have a 30 day advance option. So if you know you're going to have your artist contracts uh, signed and ready to go and you need to pay the artists 30 days in advance and you can request those funds and they will be um, put in your bank account directly. You don't get actual physical check. Um, and, and that's sort of how, how that works. Or you can request funds as you're going to reimburse for costs that you've already incurred. Um, and then what was the second question? Sorry, the second question, I've already moved down. Um, would the grant cover dollars for sliding scale tuition? I would say reach out to us about that. Um, I think we need a little bit more detail on that. I don't know, Lara, if you want to chime in, but I think I think contact us and we can talk that through. Yeah, I think give us a call and we'll talk through with you the specifics yeah. of it. Yeah, for college tuition, it wouldn't. Um, so just and that again, that's on the what we don't fund sort of list. Thank you. Next question. The last NEA grant my organization received was in 2012. Would it be best to restart our partnership with the agency with Challenge America since it is an entry level one uh, to grants for arts projects or apply directly for grants for arts projects? I think that you could do either. I think if you feel like the focus that we have talked about today of Challenge America is really a good fit with your organization, if you feel like your project is focused on reaching an underserved community and you feel like you could really benefit from submitting this, this shorter application, um, taking advantage of the technical assistance resources, then we encourage you to submit an application through Challenge America. If you feel like you already know what, you know, you've submitted to the National Endowment for the Arts before you're ready to go and you would like to be able to apply for maybe a, an award that is in uh, larger in the range of the $10,000 to $100,000 awards that you can get through Grants for Arts Projects, um, you could certainly look at that as well. And if you want to uh, talk through your specific project and your organizational history, you're always welcome to give us a call. We're happy to talk with you more about it. Thanks, Lara. And just time check, we're uh, at 3.53 Eastern time. We will stay on longer uh, to get through all the questions. Um, so um, don't jump off immediately. We'll try to get these all very quickly. Uh, next question, if a federally recognized tribe does the budget, which may define the program size, encompass the whole tribal budget or department budget? I think the question is, if, if it were receiving an application from a federally recognized tribe and it's encompassing the entire budget, does that um, disqualify them as a, in terms of the size of the organization? I think that's the question they're asking. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes total sense. And <clears throat> we get that question a lot. Um, so you'll wanna put your full organization's budget, so the full, tribe, and then there is a spot to provide more information. So you'll want to say this is funding, you know, the tribe's museum, and we are a small, you know, two people museum or whatever it is. Um, and we do encourage tribes to apply to this program if you feel like it's a good fit. Thank you, Mary. Uh, next question. Is a performance required for this grant? Would a program to enhance our DEI work in programming, artist development, organizational planning, and relationships be acceptable, or should there need to be a performance element included? There does not need to be a performance element. Um, organizational planning is an eligible project type for Challenge America. Um, what you'll want to think about is um, the engagement part of that of really, first of all, explaining in your application, um, providing that context for panelists about um, who it is that you're trying to reach and the work that you're doing, and then as well how your project is, um, is helping you to reach that group. So if you're talking about DEI work, really providing a context um, for 
to explain sort of your community and then also the specific work that you're doing. Thanks, Lara. I'm going to ask two questions that are related. Um, do you have to have your matching donors in place by part two of the grant submission? Can your $10,000 match come from, um, it just moved, <laughs> multiple sources? And the other question is, would State Arts Council money be okay for the match? Um, I'll just address the first one. Uh, you can match with State Arts Council money so long as that money is not coming from the federal government. Um, so you can't, you cannot match with federal money. Um, and the second question I'll pass over to Lara and Mary about matching donors in place by part two of the grant submission and can your $10,000 match come from multiple sources? Yeah, so the answer is you don't have to have everything perfectly in place. We understand that this application is submitted in April. You don't know until October. A lot of things can change. You'll want to have an idea or a plan in place um, for who your donors are going to be or who, where you're going to find the in-kind. Um, and, and really, we will ask you if you are recommended for the award for con con confirming that like this hasn't changed or it has changed. Um, so as long as you can give us a sort of a plan, um, you know, it's a budget, it's an idea, um, that goes for sort of all of your application. Like we know that things happen, things change. And so you do get a chance if you're, um, recommended to sort of amend some of those things slightly. Um, and then absolutely you can find different sources. Um, you can have, you know, a, a bunch of different line items that can be broken up. Um, really it's up to you guys to, to figure out what, what makes sense for, um, real organization and where, where the resources are. Thank you. Uh, here's an eligibility question. There's several, uh, we applied, um, and we're not funded about four years ago. Are we still considered first time applicants? And the second question, sorry, is our organization applied for the grants for arts in February Again, we do not know if our request will be uh, awarded. Can we still apply for Challenge America in April? So for the first part of that question, if you applied four years ago and you were not recommended for funding, as long as you meet the other eligibility requirements, you would be eligible to apply to Challenge America because you may not be a first time applicant, but you haven't been recommended for funding in one of those other programs in the last three years. Um, in terms of the application that you just submitted for GAP, um, that is where you are, we, we encourage you to reach out to the program staff for the discipline that you had applied through and um, see if they have any information for you about the status. And that is um, because the application deadline for part one is April 22nd. What we're telling people is that you can go ahead and, and submit that part one of the application. Um, and we hope that you will have received notification about your GAP award prior to that. Um, but that because that part one is a fairly straightforward form, um, you can go ahead and submit that. And then if you, depending on what you find out about your GAP application, if you're recommended for funding for fiscal year 21, um, an award in that year, then you could just not move forward with the second part of your application, which is the really, um, you know, where all of the, where all of your information is going to be compiled and submitted. Thanks, Lara. Um, just a couple questions left. I'm a first time applicant and want to continue our regional dance festival and include free performances for underserved audiences and students, possibly providing buses. Does that work for this grant? And I would just say a quick yes. Um, I don't know if Mary or Lara want to add any other comments. Okay. Um, next question, do you recommend a grant writer? We are a very small organization with only two paid individuals. Um, I'll, I'll just say this question comes up a lot. We really can't give advice uh, on that. Um, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons we have such an incredible team of Mary and Lara um, who can help answer questions. Um, 
if you feel like you need to bring on a grant writer, um, we support both decisions, uh, but um, it comes up a lot. And I don't know uh, what best advice to give you other than watch the tutorials that were created, use all of our technical assistance that we're providing. Um, we mentioned Zoom uh, webinar, Zoom office hours coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, so that's my advice. And Mary, Lara, anything else to add? Yeah, I will say just sort of evaluate your capacity as, a, as an organization. You know, if, if you are three staff members and you guys are all kind of very stretched, very thin, um, then, you know, if you have the resources to work with the grant writer, like maybe that's a good idea because it's not putting more work on yourself. But you should be able to, sub to submit a, an application um, without a grant writer. So it's really up to your specific organization. Um, and I would also recommend just looking at the part two to make sure that, because in the past, it's been a little bit more complicated as far as information that you have to provide and you know narrative. And we, we're still asking for a good amount of that information, but we're asking for a lot less. We're asking for like more condensed answers. Um, so some of the like, expertise of a grant writer in like coming up with some sort of beautiful language is maybe not needed. Um, but again, it's really up to you. We let you sort of make that decision and we're, we're happy with both sides, whatever um, you think will yield a competitive application. And again, if you aren't funded the first time, we give you the opportunity to reach out to us and to talk through your application. And you can ask, you know, really specific questions um, of us. And we um, relay the feedback that we get from our reviewers who um, are looking at the application. So areas that you may have overlooked, we can provide feedback on that. Thank you, Mary. Um, just a couple of final questions. Can we charge money for the programming slash project participation that we offer if we get the grant? Uh, yes, if you're talking about having a, a, a cost for people to participate or a ticket price or something like that, yes, you can. And um, and the the revenue that you expect to generate from that can be shown on the income side of your budget, and it can work towards um, providing that one-to-one -one match as well. Thanks. And there was another um, uh, question related to that, which I, I believe it was answered. Uh, regarding cash matched by donors, when does the money need to be in the organization's account to cover the period of this grant award and make them eligible? So we don't specifically mandate that. Um, as long as you can show that you've met the match by the end of the award when you're submitting your final reports, that's what we care most about. So, you know, that match will be there when you need it to complete the project. Um, but we don't, there's no specific date or anything like that that we require. Thank you. One final question. Um, we are interested in funding a concert with things like camera crew, marketing and director be included in this. Yes, you should be, based on sort of that general question, you should be able to include those expenses as part of your project budget. Um, and there is that, again, there's that we do not fund list on the website, which is a great place to look through kind of some of the specifics of the things that we're not able to fund. But, um, but um, one thing I'll say in terms of if you're talking about um, salaries for folks, um, that you do want to try and target in your project budget a percentage of those costs or those salaries or those contractual fees that's related to the actual project that you're requesting support for. So think about that in terms of it may be that it's a percentage of someone's salary or a percentage of some of the costs that you have um, because that is what is specifically relevant for this project um, and the scope of the project that you're requesting support for. Thank you. And there's one final question, which is um, something that was asked before. What size of organizations are eligible to apply? I will suggest you um, go through our eligibility uh, on our website, arts.gov, 
Um, we do talk about um, smaller organizations, but um, part of that is uh, you almost self-defining um, uh, how you think you feel fit with the Challenge America program. And I would strongly suggest you go through uh, our guidelines and read through them around eligibility and see if you think you fit. And of course, um, if you have questions, uh, reach out to the information you see on the screen. Uh, it is 4.06 Eastern time. We have gone through all your questions um, and we really, really appreciate everyone uh, being on this webinar. I want to um, thank, uh, of course, Mary Sellers, Lara Holman Garitano, Ali Fogel, Jen Eskin, and the rest of the folks behind the scene um, for putting this webinar together. Um, as we said from the very beginning, we are here to help you. We want to make sure you are as successful as possible. And um, please reach out to us with questions. This concludes the Challenge America webinar, and we wish you all the very best of luck. Thank you.